In this chapter we are going to talk about the, the first part of uh, designing an organization and exactly about the authority on and control. So I have drawn up myself a computer and I'm gonna uh, show some sketches of a company that is creating a computers. So let's imagine how the company begins. Maybe those are three brothers. So I have one brother, second one, and third. And one of them is, let's say, making a keyboard, one makes the make body, and one makes the screen. So it is quite fine for them because uh, they trust each other, so they do not have to control or monitor over each other. But then the company grows. So they, they decide that now we are going to have 10 employees. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But what will be necessary to do? Well, you have to split the work somehow and you have to you have to divide the task between them. So they told themselves, okay, one of us will have three guys, another one will have three, and the last one will have four. And what are we going to do now? Well, we need to somehow monitor them. So we now will need to monitor them to, to measure their um, performance. So to measure measure performance performance so actually we will we will be quite fine because uh, here will be the first brother here will be second one and the third one and they will be in charge of their departments but still the company is quite small but now they are still growing and and I will change the color so they are still growing and now they will have 100 employees and now this is not enough this this one level it is here we have got some some one level one level about about the actual employees so now they will have to create some hierarchy so they will have to make hierarchy and why they will need to do that well because of the authority and control so con Control. That is a very important word for us. So they will maybe uh, organize it in the way that there will be some bottom level of employees, then there will be some, some second level of, of the managers, which previously were the brothers themselves, and now they will be just at the top. So maybe somewhere over here. So here can be uh, 80 employees, here can be um, 17 and he will be just the three brothers so you can see that we already start to have some some sense of a, of a pyramid and that's that's where we are getting with this video right we will try to to find out uh, what is the best way how to organize a company that is growing so we can move to some actual ideas and those are going to be um, the, the, the how the pyramid should look. So, should the pyramid be somehow shaped? Yes, well, the theoreticians say that uh, there can be a flat company or a tall company. So, here I can draw some very flat company or some very flat pyramid. And here will be the tall one. So, I will have it this way. So how can look the organization? Well, just imagine the, the number of levels we have talked about. Maybe in this, this flat pyramid, so flat and tall. I will have just three levels here. One, two, three. And that's basically what they had here. Just three levels. So one, two, and three. But in the tall one we can have seven levels with the same number of employees. So one, two, three. Well, let's imagine seven. So seven and one with the same number of employees so same number of employees of employees and that's the difference uh, that there will be uh, a different problems that will be occurring in the company for instance in a I have told about this in a previous video here can be some communication problems so communication problems on the other hand in a flat pyramid uh, you can have uh, not enough uh, control, so so not enough uh, hierarchy ladder. So hierarchy can be a problem. So you really will have to uh, decide or, or design your company uh, the way that will really suit the best your situation. But how can we say that the company is either uh, flat or tail or, or its structure is one of these ways? Well, the theoreticians have examined uh, the 
many of the important companies in the world and they have uh, actually drawn uh, graphs and I will try to sketch them so here will be first one and here will be second one and we are going to have number of employees so number of employees and here also number of but here we will have number of organizational members organizational members members and on this side we are going to have a number of hierarchical levels so here we will have number of levels and here we are going to have number of managers number of managers but intuitively how how should the the line between number of employees and number of hierarchical levels should look like well from my point of view it is quite intuitive uh, that it is going to be negative because once you have some basement uh, then as the as the number of employees is increasing just one level more will add you much more of the authority and the control in the company so that so that the the actual line will will look a little bit uh s slowing down with its slope so that we can we can draw it oh maybe not not the best one sorry so we can draw it this way and maybe add some actual numbers that with 1000 so 1000 of employees they say you should have four uh, hierarchical levels so four levels and with 9000 employees so 9000 then you should have nine levels so nine levels so so you can see how it is uh, slowing down with its growth and that's quite important for us we, which especially in the second graph you will see and it is also not not uh, steeping up the slope just a little bit a little bit slower so we can draw it this way and we are going to have uh, an increase so an increase here is going to have between 2000 and 3000 so 2000 and 3000 we are going to have 50 percent increase as you see from the numbers but considering the the number of managers there is going to be just 33 percent increase so 33 percent and they say that with 2000 employees or, or organizational members you should have 300 managers you see that it is a very big number so that the the being a manager uh, is very common in a company and very often it is the the function is not called the manager itself it is just about the control or about uh, some authority in the company so you don't have to be called the manager but if you are in charge of monitoring some employees you are considered to be the manager but i will finish this uh, this small sketch a little bit so that with 6000 or between 6000 and 10000 there is 66 percent increase 66 percent increase and in the number of managers there is going to be just 14 percent increase so 14 percent increase and these numbers are telling us that um, as, as you add only one more hierarchical levels you can oversee uh, much more of your employees and much more of the flat base so this was the introduction to authority and the control and in the next videos we are going to uh, talk uh, much more about how the pyramid should look so hopefully see you there